saw it and we didn't receive a brick. That's actually an FTM 6000R from what I can tell. Well, we got everything out of that box. Very well packed. I got to give it to the ASU team and get in the box, put all this stuff in it. Very nice. Hidden compartments all around. You got to make sure you pull everything out. And, uh, oh yeah, there's another piece. Power cord, need a power cord. But yep, yeah, we seem to have everything here. We have a detachable faceplate, the main radio, microphone, extension cable for the faceplate, which is nice it comes with, faceplate mount. What is this here? Our USB data cable, mic clips, mounting accessories, fuses even. Everything you, you need here. So I'm gonna get some of this stuff out of the plastic and uh, power it up, I think. And let's see what it does. Now we've cleared up what we're gonna use for right now. And I didn't know when I uh, took the package off that this has the uh, bracket on it. So. This is actually a super stout bracket. I mean, literally reminds me of the 70s radio brackets. I mean, these, and it kind of, it reminds me of my uh, father's uh, Kenwood TR7950 with the slide off slip bracket. So that's cool. You take it inside, oh, it has a fan on it too. Oh, we don't have an external speaker B on it, but it's all inclusive. Nice data jack. We have extended speaker A. But, man, what about that B? Uh, I'm already thinking about stuff for this. But, no, in the front. And this is, this is, this always is something with detached faces. And it gets on a lot of guys' cases. Is um, When you have to plug the microphone into here which is where this is there's a the control unit which is the uh, head unit and the mic jack so the mic jack no matter where you plug it in of course you can easily get extensions they're very simple to get but yeah you still no matter where you mount this even if you use that long cord you may need a long cord for this a lot of times though uh, these end up under vehicle seats so it's not too terrible for the driver to be able to just, you know, have the mic out. Oh, I'm just bouncing the camera around. Sorry, guys. So that's what I'm thinking here. And, uh, you know, some people like it when it's built into the head unit itself, which we do have a data USB port there. Hmm. I'm going to have to read the manual for sure. I, I can't believe it, guys. But yes, I'm going to admit I'm going to read the manual a little bit. So I think that uh, sneaks out the side right like that. I really should read the instructions just a little bit. Don't want to break anything, goodness. Well, this is all kind of together. It does remind me of the radio I sent my father, which I guess has disappeared. <laughs> now, just one thing that I did realize after just doing this, I was like, well, it does have the attachment, let's use it. But it is a stationary attachment here. So it doesn't, uh, you can rotate it side to side, but you can't rotate it this way. So it's like you can't uh, do the same kind of, you know, tilt on it. Odd. I'm glad it's included. I mean, it's definitely good and, for that. Uh, boy, it is tiny. It is nice. It is feature packed. So we're going to power it up real quick. I still have the little display cover on it. But we're on 144. Now I know I read the manual just enough to be dangerous. It is a deep menu. You can, Oh, wait a minute. We don't need to do that at all. But it's an easy way. It's another feature. TX Power. Let's do that. Make sure we're on a high. Now, 144. That's kind of what we're going for right now. All right, we have uh, you know, a little 43 and a half or so watts out of 50 from what they say, of course. I don't trust this meter as much as I probably trust this radio, just, you know, cost difference and everything. Um, but uh, we're just going to go to the next band. 222. Wait a minute. It's a 2 meter 440. Oh. I'm inhibited. 
goodness. Why am I inhibited? Yes, this is this is a more general coverage receiver, so we hit that band again, we got 430. But we're transmitting on 430. Interesting. And we hit the band again, 850. 850? Inhibited. Band again, 108. Inhibited. We're inhibited, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, we do have general coverage. We can hit this uh, button real quick. Take 144, go up to like 158. But we're uninhibited, but we can uh, try, we can receive. It's actually crazy because the uh, the receive on this <clears throat> goes all the way up. And of course, they still do the cell blocking on some of these. But yeah, we have coverage, but we're you know we can't we can't transmit. We can receive on all this. It's the craziest thing. So yeah, it does have some crazy receive built into this radio here, um, just real quick. Yeah, so there is the uh, air band, 108 to 137. That's actually an AM. Then we got our two meter uh, 144 selection. Um, of course, our uh, two meter band will be enabled. Everything else we saw was inhibited. And there's our VHF general coverage, 174 to 400. And uh, there's our 7 centimeter right there with the general coverage as well uh, down below, which is uh, 480 all the way up. But yeah, everything else is inhibited on all that. And man, that's pretty cool. Uh, I know a lot of uh, public safety have gone trunk and analog, but it's still a great general coverage receiver for what's on the bands and what's, what's out there uh, to listen. And um, I think there's 1,100 uh, program channels on it. So that is pretty, pretty cool. So we're gonna talk about installing the Bluetooth unit in this radio. Now I was thinking we're gonna have to pop the covers, but we don't. It's actually built into the faceplate. Uh, we have to change uh, our little uh, faceplate. We have to add that little adapter. Um, we got this little BT or BU4, and we actually have to take the, uh, the faceplate off and uh, installed in the faceplate. Kind of makes sense, it's plastic here, everything else is metal, Bluetooth coverage, otherwise, yeah. Anyway, yeah, this is off the basic operating manual. That's the one that comes with it. Now, if you go to their website, you can download a copy of the uh, advanced manual, which is 37 more pages of just everything you can imagine inside this thing and yeah free uh just the paper for you to print this out but yeah i mean it goes through uh different functions right i mean just highly advanced features a lot of people only need the basic operation but this gets you doing a whole bunch of different stuff so it, it's a it's a radio you can dig deep into um basic just one frequency display but we're going to go ahead and install this Bluetooth module. Let me go ahead and get this part and let's uh, take the screws off and let's take a look inside. Boy, guys, I think we're going in for surgery. So, yeah, this is the tiny little uh, control panel here. And uh, everything inside here. Of course, that data jack. I looked that up. Uh, data jack is the same as the one on the on the... Um, unit. It's to update the firmware of just in here and the data jack in the actual main unit in here is to update panel firmware. Now I don't think they, well sorry guys. Yeah so that one is different than this. It's not an extension. So you um, get panel firmware and you get keypad firmware. From what I can tell I've not seen any files. If anybody knows any, that'd be kind of cool. But uh, yeah, overall, looks like we're dealing with uh, right here, right in there. Wonder how it's going to be secured. Hmm. I guess we're going to have to open the box real quick. Let's see what we got. Should be some good instructions, right? Gosh. Oh yeah, we're going in for surge. All right, let's see what surgeon uh, 
instructions have to say here. Uh, this is the BU, uh, the BU Force Bluetooth adapter for the transceiver. Please refer to the transceiver's manual for installation and operation of the BU4. Okay. And then just... <laughs> Alright, so yeah, uh, two, uh, two sentences here on this big old paper that doesn't tell you anything. But the manual sure did, so yep, yeah, refer to that. I think it was page 28. Yeah, page 28 in the basic manual tells you what to do, where it goes. It goes right there. Connector. Um, everything just snaps in. So I guess we're going to do that. I just haven't seen much on this, really, quite honest. Um, so yeah, it looks like we have the Bluetooth adapter. And we put this in where the plug is. So, plug is right there. So this goes, I guess, what they say. Okay, I guess that's it. Boy, I don't want to keep this apart too long. I don't want to break anything in this thing. So I guess, uh, yeah, everything will be secured uh, oh yeah, they already put a pad in. So yeah, they do already have a, a pad built in, even if you don't have the module. So that's what's securing it. I was wondering, because yeah, this just floats on that connector down there otherwise. So yeah, I guess it gets compressed with that pad. So cool, I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. Now we got everything back. And we don't have any smoke. But yeah, I was very uh, impressed that this does have full continual coverage through the military bands. That's pretty cool. That come in handy. Uh, I live close to one, so it'll be kind of cool to monitor all this. Um, but we installed that Bluetooth module, so we uh, hold this down. We're already on option 35. That's where you want to go. MLB BLT. Hit it. Hit the dial again. Now we have Bluetooth option. So that's pretty cool. Now I was told about the Mars Cat mod on this thing. Now I think it's just going to open up our UHF and VHF options. It's not going to give us full coverage. I mean, they wouldn't sell a receiver like this. That you could take the uh, Mars Cat mod and just to have full coverage from 108 to a uh, gigahertz wouldn't wouldn't be possible, especially one antenna connection on the back and that price point. So I'm thinking it just opens up the the, the uh, 137 to 174 and then the 400 to 480, which is good. It helps, um, especially I know a lot of guys that uh, do security and stuff like that. They end up having these uh, radios here. And they monitor their security frequencies, but they can also hit two meters or 440, um, you know, just to have one less radio or antenna in the car. Um, but yeah, then you can program in. But yeah, trunking gets in the way because this is analog only. But um, great little unit so far. But uh, we need to take a look at that Mars Cap mod. It's a long video. I'm sorry, guys.